Well, hey, here we are again with another module. We're talking this time in Module 4. And I want to cover about seven points uh, in this little short video lecture. First being, um, it's interesting that the types of families that we see today are so different from uh, those that were in place many years ago. For example, uh, my daughter-in-law teaches first grade and she was telling me that uh, young children um, often say, well, the mommy has a baby and then the mommy and daddy get married. Uh, which is so strange, and I mean, growing up myself, that was almost unheard of. But it's very common today. It's not, it's not unusual. And I think it's important for people not to get the wrong idea about single parents and uh, this whole concept of uh, divorce and broken families and things like that, because I'm a big uh, proponent and I'm interested in where I come from, and I, by, by that I mean my genealogy and who are my grandparents and great-grandparents and so forth. And one of the things that I found in that is oftentimes mother would have a children, a couple children maybe, and then she would die in childbirth with that third child. And so there's father left with two young kids uh, and a farm and trying to raise crops and animals and everything you had to do just to live and then uh, take care of these kids. And I'm talking about 1800, even, even earlier than 1800. So many times father would find another wife. It wasn't just that he wanted to fall in love again. It was a practical necessity. He wanted somebody to take care of his kids while he worked on the farm. And so then what would happen is he would have a second wife and they would have a couple kids and then that wife would die in childbirth. And so there were many, many, many uh, situations where a father had what we would call today a blended family. He would have children by two or three wives. And it's easy to see if you study uh, your ancestors at all. Uh, there are many cases like this where a father would have many different wives. And so in like manner, I mean, today you see people that live much longer. The people, you know, the death rate was so high back then from disease, childbirth, uh, even uh, violence, uh, work-related uh, accidents were much uh, more frequent. In fact, back then when you'd build a bridge or build a ship back in the 19th century, they expected to lose about 12 people. They expected 12 people to die on the job from falling off of high structures to being actually welded into a section of the ship where they couldn't get them back out. Uh, any number of things like that. And so basically uh, life was hard in the 19th century, even harder in the 18th and so forth. And life was short. And so a lot of people, even though they only lived about 35 years, uh, they were involved in numerous different relationships. Well, today people live at least to be, on average, about 75 years. Frankly, uh, many people live to be 90, 85. My mother's 87. And just like a little spark plug, she just keeps uh, moving around and firing away. And so this long life uh, expectancy changes people's attitude toward marriage. People just get downright bored with each other and want to move on. Uh, this was never a problem in the early history because people just died and so you were left wanting more relationship with that person not less. So these are the big fundamental changes between let's say the 18th, 19th century and the 20th, 21st century. Uh, and so as we are faced with somewhat different problems, underlying core issues with those problems are still the same. Families have never really been that nuclear uh, family that we often talk about or intact family. Oftentimes that was a, an issue where we had um, one parent uh, with stepchildren, one parent with uh, two sets of kids from two different wives, uh, maybe sometimes even three, where you would have uh, everybody would be like half-brother, half-sister, uh, this type thing. Uh, and so uh, what we see today is not that different. So we shouldn't get ourselves too overwrought about that. 
Well, the other thing is that I wanted to talk about the work issue for single mothers because there's a lot of women that have never been married, have children, and are faced with this responsibility of having to raise this child, work, keep an eye on them. And as we get into this more, we'll talk about these latchkey kids, which are kids that have their own house key. They get off school at three. Mom doesn't get off work until about five. And so there's this long gap in the middle where children can get into all kinds of mischief or they can become the victims of crime if they live in uh, a dangerous kind of a neighborhood. And so these are all things that we'll look at in module four and we'll look at even more closely in module five. Well moving on then the single mother is just like sometimes overwhelmed you know with the needs of the children the needs of the family as far as to provide for the family financially and then her own needs you know she wants to have a life she wants to have a boyfriend and it's hard to juggle all those things. In fact I am so proud of many of my students that are single mothers that come through these programs in uh, college education and succeed. I just feel so good about that because I know how difficult it is. I've seen it for many years. And it's really neat to go to a graduation and see a young person that's the first person in their family to graduate from college. Man, what a great uh, thing to see happen. And I get to see it over and over. That's why I love my job. Well, moving on then, beyond this uh, single mom, we get back into the thing we've continued to talk about is uh, we have this situation with the unequally joined intact family, which can be just as devastating for a child as a single mother uh, in a bad situation where she can't keep an eye on the kids and work and do all things she's got to do. But the uh, unequally joined parents is where you have an authoritarian parent, which is like a dad that always wants to resort to the belt, and the child runs to mom, and mom defends the child and says, oh no, Johnny's a good boy, uh, don't beat Johnny, you know, this type thing. So you have these people pulling against each other, kind of at loggerheads all the time, and as a result, the child doesn't get a clear message of you know what is the right way to live you know how what is a law-abiding citizen I mean you know how do you get along in the world so sometimes it's very confusing for a child and, and not very healthy so sometimes being in an intact family where the parties are unequally joined together is just as bad or worse than just having a single mother trying to raise you and struggle and get through everything that she needs to do to bring up her family uh, there are many single parents that have raised, you know, wonderful children. Um, just reading uh, today about Marvin Harrison, the great um, Colts uh, receiver, and uh, his family, and his mother, and his grandmother, and uh, his aunt, and how all three of these women worked hard to help raise him, and now how he's taking care of them and uh, been a real success in football. So, I mean, this is just one example. There are many, many other examples where uh, kids persevered, mom persevered, and just a single family, but still got along really, really well. Uh, moving on forward then, after we talk about the uh, mixed marriage where the parents are at loggerheads, we want to talk a little bit about the blended family. And, you know, this can be really bad at times. I mean, it's been around for a long time. goes back to what I was saying about where we have step-parents and, um, you know, they keep getting married because of illness and death. And think of that story, Cinderella. Cinderella, terrific story to explain this. Just go back and reread that. You could probably Google on Cinderella and just read the whole story. But there's a lot of Cinderella-type stories, you know, where we've got being raised by a stepmother that has her own two daughters and she prefers her own daughters over Cinderella and she treats her badly, makes her work all the time while she carries these other two girls around uh, you know on a soft cushion and they never have any uh, chores or responsibilities and there's a lot of people that have always felt that way growing up that well my stepmother didn't really like me I don't like her, she didn't treat me right uh, and so these can really be uh, unhealthy relationships sometimes in these blended families. But others here again are very successful 
and I think it just all depends on uh, going back to this thing about authoritative versus authoritarian parenting and of course uh, uh, the permissive parenting is also not the way to go so the authoritative is where you draw from you know some of the requirements of the authoritarian parent where you do have certain demands but you also have a lot of responsiveness where you show a lot of caring love uh, you're always available to talk to the child and help them uh, with all their problems and needs and have more of an open kind of relationship instead of a kind of a love-hate relationship that you have in that authoritarian relationship where the father seems so unapproachable and angry all the time. So basically if the blended family can develop in such a way that it adopts a lot of these same uh, principles of the authoritative parent, the theory is at least that they can be a success. Well it's kind of interesting uh, because they're saying that even in some gay families where there's uh, two gay parents, um, you know, they can run into these same, same problems in terms of how to develop their family, authoritarian, authoritative, or permissive. So it's like they have no corner on, you know, a good family. Uh, they're, they're having to fight with the same problems. They've got to work, they've got to balance their schedule, they've got to decide what's the best way to deal with the child, to teach the child. They need to be on the same page, both parents. You need to work together. Uh, it can be bad when a child tries to manipulate the parents against each other. Dad says no, maybe mom will say yes. Well, mom don't say yes out of hand. Uh, check in with dad first uh, to make sure you're on the same wavelength as far as what should be done with this child. And if you, if you think that father's being a little bit overly aggressive, then just confront the whole issue and say, hey, your mom and I have talked, I'm rethinking, uh, reconsidering what I said. I think you can go to the dance, but I want you home by 10 or, or whatever, you know. So basically, when we get into this type thing uh, of the, how the family works and how it's constructed and how it operates, how families are put together are much less important than how they work together. So in other words, if uh, whatever, you have a single parent uh, and yet she's able to juggle all these different issues and problems, then that is good. If you have an uh, intact family and here again they're on the same wavelength and they're all working together for the good of the family, then that is good. Uh, if you have grandmother raising a child, uh, same thing. Uh, you know, uh, not too high-handed, just uh, responsive and caring and loving, uh, but at the same time says, hey, this is the line, you don't want to go over this line, uh, then that will be good. So how the family is constructed is less uh, important than how the family operates. Uh, and that's just kind of the considered opinion of a lot of authorities. And quite frankly, I think it's worked for me between my wife and I, we've tried to always get together and sort things out and um, uh, have one voice, speak with one voice, uh, and uh, I think that's the best in, in all cases. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this. This is kind of a touchy subject because, you know, a lot of us are parents and a lot of us have responsibilities, and I don't mean it to be any way um, demeaning or uh, in any way... Um, degrading you or giving you a hard time. We all have a difficult time working our way through this whole parenting thing. Uh, anybody can be a parent, but not just anybody can be a good parent. And my hope and prayer for everybody is that we all uh, put forth our best efforts and uh, work together in raising our kids. Very important when we think of it in the context of crime and delinquency. Well, hey, Hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, we'll be back with another one soon. Thanks for watching.